On this hunt, I'm in deep west Texas, hoping to pick up where I left off back in April. I'm chasing after the elusive and free-range Audad sheep. On my first trip back in April, the temperatures were miserably hot and the hunting was unbearably slow. I'm hoping now that coming back later in the season and closer to the rut will make all the difference in finding a giant working man's ram. With this wind and rain, I want to get under three if I can. Unreal. I'm back. Come up here, boy. Welcome to Mordor. I bet you want to see him, don't you? Boom. Look at that guy. I'll tell you this right now. If I lose another big buck like that to these damn cameras, patience is definitely a virtue that I have. Or laziness. This thing's a tank. It's a bad day right there. Check, check. Well, ah, I don't know where to put this damn thing. There we go. That's better, I guess. It's so bright. Super hot today. Just kind of easing along this edge. Got the wind kind of coming across. Kind of trying to glass the bottoms down here under some of these bigger clumps of brush as well as in front of me and behind me in the, the rim rocks. It's really kind of hard to sneak out and look down over the edge, but so many ins and outs and cuts and digs where they could just be laying. So super rough country, rocks, everything. Cactus. Everything here sticks you and pokes you. As long as it's only the cactus and brush that stick me, we're good. But it's the tails of the giant rattlesnakes from this part of the country that I'm watching out for. Two days into this trip and I'm already wondering, why in the hell would anyone set up a hunt in Texas during the summer? Right now, this seems like a darn good question. One that keeps playing over and over in my head, with every step that I take and every degree the temperature rises. It's damn hot out here and I'm finding myself stuck in the conundrum of what part of this is fun and at what level do I cross the line of insanity. Walking on this stuff. Wear your feet down in a hurry. Just all day long, just rock, rock, rock. Why am I walking around all day long? It's a good question. Don't make fun of me, I had my ears tucked in because they were burning. So I tucked them in my hat. <clears throat> I went up to see if there's any way to get around this. Right here I can, but on the other side of this, it kind of jets back and goes clear back, wherever, clear back and off the property. Yeah, I think I could just get out there, get into some shade, maybe even plants. Water. I came down here during the off season for two reasons. It's cheap and I'm a tight one. Okay, that's really only one reason, but besides the fact that I have limited time during the fall and winter, fringe seasons are where a guy can find a good deal. And if you're willing to work hard and put in the miles for a tough hunt, you can be rewarded well. This hunt is on private property, but then again, that's Texas. Hundreds of thousands and millions upon millions of unmolested, wild and free private acres. Property line is not too far that way. I have permission on several small tracts of land that sometimes hold sheep and other times may not. Found a little shady spot. Shitty? Is that what I said? Shady. But it is kind of shitty. I would say to you that you get what you pay for, but for me, the gratification comes from knowing that I did it on my own. I work hard, and if I'm rewarded with a ram, great. And if not, oh well. I know I'll have a good time, and that's time that would pass by anyway. That's time that was well spent. It's hot. Cooking. Even the cheese on my sandwich. No. Probably should have ate this a couple hours ago. 
As the heat of the day melts into the long shadows of the evening, the temperatures begin to fall and my spirits rise. The lifeless desert crags come to life with ewes and lambs, and what seemed like a hopeless situation just hours before quickly turns into a reminder of what I'm out here for. To experience another excursion on a new land. To pursue an animal that I've never hunted before and to recharge my soul on the powerful solemnity of the land. After two more days of seeing no rams, I threw it in. But not before getting my pal Mike McKinney back on the phone and setting up a return trip for November, closer to the rut. Mike is a good dude and would do whatever he could to set me up on a good sheep. But the reality is, it's hunting. If they ain't there, they ain't there. Regardless of his lack of guarantee, I'm back. It's noticeably colder, and the cool winds feel great. Whether you contend with the heat or the wind and rain, it's still nature. Mother wild throwing obstacles in your way just to make your life interesting. Right now I'm looking for the sheep to be doing what I feel like doing after a 20 hour drive. Fill my belly and catch up on some sleep. Find a sunny spot, tucked in out of the wind, and take a nap. It's only the first day into this trip and there's noticeably a lot more activity going on than there was a few months before. I've already seen more sheep and deer in five hours than I did in five days during the heat. Darkness is rolling in quick and from my experience, that's when the desert critters come alive. I've got this lone javelina headed my way and I'm trying to decide how to make my play. I really don't think it's much of a challenge to smash this runt with a gun, so as soon as he ducks back into the brush, I'll make my move. I'm gonna haul butt back out to the truck, grab my bow, and come back in and see if I can rouse him up again, before it gets too dark. some sheep I've been walking up the bottom of this draw from way back there. The truck's about two miles that way. 
been walking up and I spotted some sheep up here on the rim rock. So they're just going, kind of going up right now. They're kind of in the, in the little draw here, but they're working their way up to the top. So I'm thinking either they'll go up there and feed or find somewhere to bed down. But I'm just going to work back down to the bottom of this riverbed, this arroyo, I guess they call it, and work my way up until I can uh, get to where I can poke over and see how far it is and then kind of make a plan from there. But I'm going to get ready just in case because you never know what's going to jump up on the way. It looks like I got about another three quarters of a mile to a mile to go up and around this bend before I can pop up and, and get to where it should be close to a shot. So we'll see. Hopefully there's a ram in there. If there is, I'm going to shoot him. Lots of little cuts like this that you can get down and get low in. Sneak up there. So. Turn this camera off, get quiet. Wind. I didn't want to mess with that, so snuck the edge of the arroyo back up, and now I'm coming down through this brush. Want to get around through here, pop up. I'm hoping that it's under 400, preferably three. I know my gun's capable of more with this wind, which you can't feel it now because it's in the bottom, but with this wind and rain, I want to get under three if I can. I'm gonna try to keep quiet now. It's good that I got some cover noise with the wind and rain, but they seem to be really hunkered up. After a couple of hours, I've crawled up into position to within a few hundred yards of these sheep. The cameras are all set up and I've got a solid rest. The crosswinds and rain are going to make this shot difficult. Had to throw a little bit of lead at him, but I got him. Man, two rams in there, one. This one's just a giant. I mean, it looked huge. It's been raining and blowing, and I just got all set up and perfect, and 
They were bedded right up there in a spot where I'm pretty sure I can get to them right underneath them. But they were just bedded right above that cave. And um, been here for two hours waiting them out just to, to get them to stand up. And he stood up once and couldn't really see him very good. And he, he laid back down. And, but he stood up this second time and I was thinking, man, he's just gonna walk out. And he just stood there and stood there and stood there for about three minutes and turned just a little bit perfect broadside and I figured well I can either whack him now and not get as good a footage and uh, have a better chance of him just falling you know on a flat spot and not going down the cliff or I can wait and hope let him walk out or he could have just turned around and laid right back in his bed and I'd be here for another two hours so and I didn't want to chance it so him low on that first shot I'm sure and then it took a few more <laughs> oh. that's, the, that's the cave they were bedded up above he kind of circled around this way and then came back down underneath it should be right up there right up there hopefully I can get there without breaking my neck they yeah, actually looks a lot easier than it did from down below. I knew that I could get go right up there if I have to. Well, back down here, a few hundred yards. Well, I can see right where he came down, right here. Walked right up to him <laughs> and he ain't broken. Check this out. Zoop. Unreal. That's sweet. It didn't break on the fall. That's just character damage. Look at these things. So big. Here's the character. Oh man. Got dinged up a little bit on the fall. Some unusual looking digs, but oh look at that. Look at that. So big. His horns are like almost touching right there. This has gotta be gotta be an old ram free range wild ram no fences here oh man i don't even know what to say i don't even know if i'm on camera hello camera yes i'm on camera there was another smaller ram there and then off to the left there were some other sheep i couldn't really tell what they were but this was definitely the beast when i put the camera up and spot and scope on him i was like whoa the big old sheep, man. Grateful to be able to come down and get a second crack at him, at a sheep, you know, after coming down in April. Today, I honestly, I laid in the bed this morning, it was raining. I was sleeping in the back of my truck and I could just, it was just raining hard on the, the shell. And so I laid in the bed till the sun came out and it kept raining. And so I thought, well, I might as well drive into town and do some emails and call my wife. So I drove into town and thought, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go check that other spot because I can drive up it a ways, do some glassing, and then just walk up the bottom, put on my rain gear and not worry about it. And as soon as I got up the bottom of this arroyo and the rain stopped and walked up about a mile and saw some sheep coming right up these little edges here. Didn't even know if they were rams and just hauled butt up the bottom. The rest is history. Found this hammer, laid on him for a while, and he stood up. And I laid him down. I would have shot any ram, but I got a stinking bomber ram. This thing's a tank. All right, take some pictures, break him down. Throw as much as I can in the bag. 
get out to the truck, come back up and do it again. Get this load out. Last load. I really don't know what to say about this hunt. It was hard, and it was exactly what I expected. When I first planned it out nearly a year ago, I thought about other odd ad hunts that I've seen on TV. Hundreds of sheep crawling all over the mountainside, handpicking which ram you wanted to take home, and eating like a king with Texas hospitality in a posh lodge. But then I thought, that's not me. And that's not you. I feel like you guys and gals watching Solo Hunter have a different appetite for adventure. An appetite that can only be pacified by doing. Telling a story is relatively easy. Living one, on the other hand, is hard. These things are going to be right in my armpits. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Son of a gun. <laughs> 